Hi guys, this is The Advisor and welcome back to my channel. Now, today's story is an extremely interesting one. And it is interesting because it is something that is happening and we as human beings, we tend to push it aside and pretend that it's not there. But I'm going to expose the nasty underbelly of some organizations that we sort of look up to very highly and some people that we look up to with reverence when they are nothing but just scammers and hypocrites. Anyway, but, but before I get into the actual story, there is a term, there is a way of speaking in Jamaican language in our local dialect called reduplication. Uh, most people have never ever heard of the word reduplication. But it is one of those colorful things that makes our language so vibrant, so beautiful, and so different. Now, what is, what is reduplication? Well, it is repeating the same word. So say the word, one word twice, and by saying the word twice, F f together, saying the same word twice, it gives you a completely different meaning from if you had said the word once. Now, today's word, I'm going to, over the next few weeks, I am going to bring out some reduplication, words of reduplication that are found in our local Jamaican patois. And this is pretty interesting. And people, stick around because you're going to find this to be quite fun. Today, the first word I'm going to bring on is back back. Now, a lot of people, basically I think every Jamaican might know what back back means. But write it in the comments section and let us know. Especially if you are a foreigner, I would be quite <laughs> much more. <laughs> um, if you are a Jamaican who have lived overseas, maybe born overseas, you are still Jamaican if your parents are Jamaican. Then tell us what back back means. Yeah? And every day I'm going to bring on a new word. I, I have compiled about 74 or 75 such reduplicative words. And I'll be bringing one out maybe with every, um, every new post I make. Uh, for, for the next few weeks or so. So let's see how, how it goes. Now, on to the story. Now, this is a letter uh, that I had received in 2016. Yes, way back in the summer of 2016. But it is this story is as relevant then as it is now. And it will be relevant well uh, as long as humankind exists. So it's like I would received this letter this morning so it is that important it is that vital and that necessary and that relevant so guys this is the letter i greet you in the precious name of jesus christ our soon coming king i am a 19 year old christian lady and i've been trying to live the christian life to the best of my ability I work as a booking clerk at a motel in the Hagley Park area of Kingston for almost a year. Before I started doing this job, I had no idea what these places were really used for. I thought it was just for people from out of town or from overseas who needed a place to stay, but couldn't afford to stay in the fancy places in the new Kingston area. But now I know better. Since being here, I have had to call on my faith more often than before. Can you believe that in the very first few weeks on the job, I booked two members of my church into a room? They are both single, but the man is actually a deacon. The second case occurred a few months ago. I booked in a pastor of my church. He is about 50 years old, married, and has three kids with his wife. The girl he was with did not appear to be much older than I. I felt so sorry for his wife. I knew her, and she is a very nice lady. 
these two incidents left me very confused. But by far the worst incident was two weeks ago when I saw one of my favorite church aunties accompanying a man to book a room. The church also operates a school and she is a member of the school board and a member of the finance and disciplinary committees. She also holds other administrative positions there at our church. She too is married. When I saw her, I was so shocked that even though she could not see me through the one-way glass, I had to allow my co-worker to book them in. Moments later, I went to the bathroom and cried. I was so deeply affected by that and my hands trembled for several days. Now, whenever I go to church, I avoid these people. I just don't feel comfortable in their presence anymore. I really love my church, but I keep wondering who else might be doing the same thing. I'm seriously thinking of going to worship elsewhere. What should I do? So far, I have not said anything to anybody because I don't want anyone to know where I work. And secondly, I don't think anyone would believe me. I don't even know where to start or what to do or even what to, to ask you. But I need to offload on somebody. What is your advice? And she signed her name as Simone. Well, this is the answer I gave her. Dear heart, it is obvious that you have lived a very sheltered life, a very, very sheltered life, and that's obvious. You are extremely naive. You actually think that um, most people in the world are decent, respectable, and morally upstanding. More so, you actually believe that people in the church are even more morally upstanding and are living very clean and decent life. And I think this is a reflection of your own life because people normally see others as a reflection of themselves. So because you are living so clean, you actually think that other people reflect the same image you have of yourself and you perceive them to be the same way as you are. Clean, upstanding, decent, moral, and principled. But... Here's the truth, dear heart. You're, you're only 19. And at the age of 19, it, it is um, and because of the way you have been grown and have been pre-programmed, pre it's difficult for you to see life any other way. But, my dear, there is another life out there and there's another world out there which is far different from the one you envisage. And as you get older, you're going to realize that that is the case. You know, but here, here is what. I'm going to take you back to your own Bible for a mo moment. There is a passage in the Bible which says, There is none, for it is written, there is none not righteous, no, not one. Right? And that is in Romans 3 verse 10. So, nobody no righteous. Not even you who is, feel, is so flustered by what you saw from your, amongst members of your church. It doesn't mean that nobody no righteous. Yeah? So, just remember that and get out of this thinking, we are thinking that people are can live the way you read about in the bible that's not possible and bear in mind again when you are thinking about these people remember this and this also applies to you for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of god all and remember we are all born in sin and shaped in iniquity so Bear in mind all those passages that come from the book that you ascribe to. And you must not read your Bible and leave out scriptures like those which tell you exactly, which tell you exactly about human behavior. Right? So, next thing I'm going to tell you, do not move to another church. I mean, if, if you're going to feel comfortable 
moving to another church, then fine. But one thing I can tell you, do not believe that if you move to another church, the people in the other church that you move to will be any better. No. It's the same people who, the same passages when we read about them being sinful in your church, them going to be sinful in the other church. And they all be doing it from the general members to the deacons to the whatever status they have, right up to the pastor, to the bishop, to the archbishop, if one is there. So, my dear, if you feel like continue to praise your God, stay right there or just stay home and praise him. Nobody now have, as far as me concerned, nobody now have no straight line to him more than anybody. The only person, the only person who um, who benefits from claiming to have a straight line is the person who gets to take your money, to connect you with God when God's supposed to in everybody. So, what I would advise you to do though, don't say anything to anybody. Yeah? Keep it to yourself. Protect people's privacy. They are human beings. They might have messed up, but they are human. And they are no less hypocritical than anybody in any other church. They are all the same. And if anybody, anybody, Christian, come tell you, say they are different, just read them three passages there to them. All I'm seeing done fall short of the glory of God. There is none that righteous, no, not one. And the next one. Yeah? Anyway, so here is what. Keep your job, though. Don't give up your work. Because you need the job. But after you, um, see if you can get trained further so you can find another job and find something that pays better. Can it make sense to leave one work and go into another job that, that, that pays the same? You must try and step up. So do that with your life and just understand, go with the flow. And I say this too, one day you are going to find that you yourself is going to find a man, I don't know if you have one because you never said, and you go and go and do some little that, that business there with him. And you go and go in a church and stand up and be hypocrite like the whole of them same way. It might, I'm assuming, based on your letter, that this not reach you yet. But sooner or later, it going to reach you. And you're going to say, oh, now me see what this man is talking about. So all of you out there who are in this position, just live and let others live. Because... All of them are hypocrite. Every last one of them. Okay? So guys, like, share, leave a comment below. And I look forward to seeing you in my next video.